the Adams family. Think you did the right thing by joining that Zen Yogi Society? Obviously. <laughs> Nothing more important than physical culture. True. Ever see anything more restful on the feet? No. I can't say that I have. Does your head feel good, dear? Darling, you can't have everything. <laughs> That's true. I never thought of that. I wish you'd get Uncle Fester to join up. He wouldn't even listen. Something's come over him lately. He's been acting sly, secretive. Dear Uncle Fester, he just improves with age. <laughs> oh. How do you like this? <laughs> oh, yes. But I'm not sure about the neck. Oh? Too low? Too wide. For Cousin Eustace? I take it back. <laughs> ah, two o'clock. The afternoon paper should be in. I'll get it. Alley oop. Oop. Ah. Don't be long. I won't. I'll wait for you in the conservatory. Morticia. Time has stood still for you, Angelito Mio. You look even lovelier than the day I first laid eyes on you. Bubble. That word. I'd better go. No, sir. Someone's been stealing it the past four or five days. Any idea who it is? <laughs> Fine loyalty. would be a madhouse. <laughs> Is mother's baby hungry? Hmm? <laughs> 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 Patricia? Oh, Gomez, the most touching thing has happened. Your carnivorous plant put its tentacle around you again. Fish, I think you've been feeding them altogether too much hamburger. No, 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 sweetheart. It's the trailing arbutus and the creeping midnight crawler. They're embracing. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? They fell in love and intertwined. But the creeper went to the left and the arbutus went to the right and they choked each other. What a way to go. <laughs> Morticia, I must tell you, Uncle Fester is not himself. Oh? Is that bad? Maybe not. <laughs> but he has been interfering with the children's upbringing lately. Against my express wishes, he promised little Pugsley a Gila monster. Darling, it's healthy for children to have pets. Gila monsters? Why not? They're so expensive. <laughs> Dear Uncle Fester, generous to a fault. Wee! Mommy, Daddy, come look, come look. Look, little 
Uncle Fester got me. He had it made especially for me. The Black Widow Spider Village. Isn't that lovely? Just like a society of small humans. Yeah, they do nothing but fight. <laughs> That's life. What, is this anything for our child? Of course not. She already has many more spiders than she'll ever need. <laughs> Have fun, dear. still think we should talk to Uncle Fester. Maybe, but gently. The last time we scolded him, he went into his closet and didn't come out for weeks. It was an act, my dear. He loves his closet. <laughs> interesting, yes. Very interesting. Come in. Is that you talking to yourself, Uncle Fester? You've been doing that quite a bit lately. Well, only when I'm alone. <laughs> Uncle Fester... Now, I, I know what you're going to say. I've been spoiling the children. I guess I like to feel wanted. But you are wanted. And needed. Needed? You wouldn't even let me fix that leak in the roof. And my finger fitted perfectly. <laughs> Uncle Fester, I told you. That's my favorite leak. <laughs> What about you? There was a time you'd never think of using your electric shaver without connecting it to me. Well, Gomez felt you'd been a bit run down lately. Run down? <laughs> and I can still make it blink, too. <laughs> you call that run down? Well, the truth is, Uncle Fester, uh, my new shaver is AC and you're DC. Excuses, excuses. I'm sorry. Well, you don't have to be. I've been scanning the Lonely Hearts column. You haven't. You sly old fox, you. <laughs> well, under the circumstances, I, I thought I'd take a bride. Uncle Fester, you just can't take one. You're supposed to find your own. It's the sporting way, old boy. <laughs> You'll be fighting the women off with clubs. Clubs? Oh, yes. I think I'd like that. <laughs> well, I better get on with the letter. Oh, Gomez. This morning when I woke up and the sky was all dark and cloudy, I knew right then and there that this was going to be a lovely day. <laughs> but I can truthfully say I have never let breeding, social position, or looks go to my head. And I am looking forward to meeting someone of the opposite sex with these same qualities. <laughs> Signed, modesty. <laughs> Excellent. You have a very delicate handwriting. <laughs> Thank you, Thing. Uncle Fester, we have a surprise for you. A surprise for me? I know I'm going to cry. Close your eyes. All right, Gomez. I just know I'm going to cry. <laughs> you can open them now. Oh. We saved it from our wedding. It's beautiful. And you made such a handsome couple. <laughs> I do hope my bride will be worthy of all this. I better mail this Do you think I ought to send a snapshot along? I believe so. How about that nice one the city took? The time you fell asleep on the park bench and they carried you off to the morgue by mistake. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No, that... I was thin then, and I had hair. I do look better now, don't I? Much. <laughs> I'll have a new one taken. Yes, but it's imperative that it show your character, your strength, your nobility. We'll have it touched up. That won't be necessary. I'll take the picture. Ready? <laughs> Oh, no, Uncle Fester, you're smiling. No, pardon me. Just show the natural Adam's charm. 
got you. <laughs> Much better. Much. Now, now for the character. Beautiful. Now, let's see that strength. Magnificent. Now, the pièce de résistance. Your nobility. Oh, hurry, Gomez. Get it before he loses it. All right. Hold it. Hold it now. Hold it. Ready? Buster's bride will be like. He once went with a girl who looked like a walrus. <laughs> Darling, beauty isn't everything. <laughs> You're right. He's talking about moving after the wedding. He's found a home in a nice condemned section. I wonder what their children will be like. Doesn't matter about the boys, but I hope the girls look like Uncle Fester. <laughs> I do wish Grandpa Squint and Aunt Vendetta were still alive. They get such a thrill out of the wedding. Darling, they are alive. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they don't look it. I'd better check. <laughs> better. How you like it? Like what, old boy? Can't you tell? Uh, a new collar. <sighs> Certainly not. How can you improve on genuine match gopher? <laughs> You're uh, parting your hair, just No, that can't be it. <laughs> Come on, take a real close look. I've got it. You've had your head waxed. Yes! <laughs> oh, you men. You're much fussier than women. It's hide coat. <laughs> oh, crack, scuff, or stain. <laughs> it's very becoming. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. Oh, has the mail come in yet? Now, oh, now, control yourself, old boy. You know the mail doesn't come along until later. I just can't help it. I'm a lovelorn swain wandering around in a lovely black cloud. <laughs> Darling, you can't expect an answer to your letter yet. You only mailed it yesterday. Oh, you never know. There may be someone out there as eager as I am. <laughs> Dear Uncle Fester, I haven't seen him this happy since he blew up the guest house. Mother, mother! Oh, hush, Bruno. You've been so grumpy lately. I wish you wouldn't shout so. Your father's trying to take a nap. Oh, that's all right. I just can't seem to sleep anyway. I guess I'm excited about Uncle Fester's wedding. I wanted to show you the present I have for him. You like it? But, darling, I don't see anything. You're not supposed to. Uncle Fester says it's the thought that counts. I'm thinking of a nice, friendly cobra. <laughs> Isn't that clever? If we put our minds to it, we can save a fortune. <laughs> yes, thing? Why, thank you. For Uncle Fester? What is it? Come on, now, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> A shrunken head. Just what he wanted. <laughs> I do hope your brother Pugsley hasn't forgotten his dear uncle. He's going to buy something. He's upstairs getting the money out of his piggy bank now. Oh? Whew. 
Uncle Fester, you must give it time. It's only been one day. I was sure I'd get an immediate response. I gave a very full description of myself. Patience. <laughs> Your Miss Wright will come along. Is your mother home? Are you from the health department? Why? The neighbors complained about Aristotle getting loose. Aristotle? What an odd name for a dog. Not for an octopus. <laughs> no, not for an octopus. Well, I'm not here about anything like that. I sell cosmetics and toiletries. Oh, well then my mama's at home. Her name is Mrs. Adams. Well, thank you. Say, maybe you could help me make a sale. What kind of powder does your mommy use? Baking powder. I mean on her face. Baking powder. <laughs> and Uncle Fester uses a spray-on preservative. Uh, no, you mean a spray-on deodorant. No, preservative. Oh, to keep young? Just to keep. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You've been very helpful. <laughs> She's here. She didn't even bother to write. She just packed the bag and came in person. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. She's not my type at all. Uncle Fester, I agree she doesn't have your looks. But maybe with a, a nice, stringy hairdo, she'd be almost presentable. Oh, no, that's not enough. <laughs> but perhaps way down deep inside where it really counts, she's one of us. Oh, no, no. There's no chemistry. She doesn't do anything for me. Our life together would be a mockery. <laughs> Birch, don't go to the door. Maybe she'll go away. <laughs> Someone at the door. Oh, darling, it's Uncle Fester's mail-order bride. Ugly duckling. <laughs> Just doesn't pay to order by mail. I'm going to hide. No, you're not. You're going to stay right here and face her. This will be a very good experience for you in handling a scheming, grasping woman. How do you know she's scheming and grasping, Tish? She came over here with a bag, ready to move right in. <laughs> kind of must let on the competition. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Adams? I'm Miss Carver. Yes. Won't you come in? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I'm not always greeted so cordially and invited in immediately. You do this often? Oh, many times a day. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> you mustn't be discouraged. I always say there's a right one for everyone. <laughs> like you're preparing for some sort of a party. Every day is a party with us. <laughs> Miss Carter, this is my husband, Mr. Adams. How do you do, Miss Carver? Please sit down. Uh, thank you. Oh, and don't tell me, that gentleman behind you is Uncle Fester. I know from the description I've received. You can't force me. <laughs> oh, I never use force. Just gentle persuasion. And sometimes in difficult cases, I merely give a free sample and leave the prospect to think it over. <laughs> Miss Carver, we don't countenance such behavior in this house. Well, then I'll be happy to accept cash. <laughs> I believe that we can quickly convince you that your visit here is quite hopeless. Oh, don't say that. 
Very difficult, yes, but certainly not hopeless. <laughs> Let me ask you a few honest and straightforward questions, Miss Carver, and uh, you'll see what we mean. You've met Uncle Fester. Do you really think you have something to offer him? <laughs> oh, I should say. Why, I could make a new man of him entirely. I have a 90-day plan that works wonders. <laughs> That's typical of a woman. You meet the ideal man, and right away you try to make him over. <laughs> Not make over. Just enhance and bring out the basic attractiveness which you already have in such abundance. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. You have it bad, have you? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, you just met Uncle Fester, and already you're willing to devote your life to him. <laughs> I do have a lifetime plan, but I'm sure you'll see a great improvement in just 90 days. <laughs> Would you excuse us for a few minutes, please? A little family conference. Uh, of course. <laughs> Uncle Fester, I think we may have judged Miss Carver too hastily. I can't stand her. She's crazy about you, old boy. Darling, you could make her over a little. Get her a decent wardrobe. And after she's been out of the sun for a few months, she'll lose that ghastly color. <laughs> I changed my mind. I don't want to get married. I guess my standards are just too high. <laughs> you let her on. Now, you go in and be nice to her. She's probably in an agony of doubt. Yes. <laughs> Have you decided to let me give you a demonstration? Oh, no, I can't go to it. Oh, come now. Let me show you something exotic for the boudoir. Don't you dare! Perhaps you ought to let her, Fester. It might give you a change of heart. Go! There's no harm. Go on, Fester. Let yourself go. Take her in your arms, kiss her. It might not be so bad if you keep your eyes closed. Mr. Adams. She's quite right. Young lovers should be alone. <laughs> Young lovers? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Fester, I think you've just been jilted. Consider yourself lucky, Uncle Fester. She was a very vain woman. That case was full of nothing but cosmetics. And no taste. Not a bit of baking powder. Anything interesting in the paper tonight, dear? Just a situation wanted, Ed, by that Miss Carver. I suppose she decided against marriage. Some people just don't have it. You were very lucky, Uncle Fester. <laughs> sure was. This day's yogi is much better than marriage. Marvelous, isn't it? Yeah, and so economical. Economical? No shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 